Due to the moisture sensitivity of the reaction, it is required to wash and flame dry the glassware and equipment before proceeding with the experiment. It is suggested to wash the glassware with both a polar and nonpolar solvent the day prior. The first washing agent used is acetone. Make sure to clean the inside of the 25 milliliter round bottom flask by spinning the glassware at least five times. Dump the solvent into the non-halogenated waste. Next, the syringes and magnetic stir bar are washed as shown over the waste bin. In order to properly wash the needles, first assemble the syringe, draw the acetone into the needle, and dispose the washing agent into the non-halogenated waste. Repeat the previous steps two to three times. Once the equipment is properly washed with polar acetone, perform the last rinse using hexane as the washing agent. Due to its non-polar and hydrophobic characteristics, hexane is used to minimize the amount of water residue. This step is especially important if you are washing the glassware the day of the experiment. Next, place the washed equipment into the oven for at least 5 minutes to let them dry. Be sure to use heat-resistant gloves when removing the hot glassware from the oven. Place the equipment into the desiccator for 10 minutes. The desiccator is a dry environment used to cool down the glassware and needles without reintroducing moisture in the air back into the equipment. If there is not enough room, there is no need to place the round bottom flask into the desiccator. It can be directly flame dried. The next step is flame drying under argon gas. This is the argon tank. Make sure the tank is secure with a chain around at all times to ensure that the tank does not fall over or get damaged. First, turn the parts of the argon tank counterclockwise in the following order. The main valve, which opens the tank, the regulator, which adjusts the pressure of the argon gas, and the small valve, which is connected to the manifold. Make sure the argon pressure gauge is between 15 to 20 psi by adjusting the regulator. The argon gas will first travel from the tank to the manifold hood through the thin, built-in line. It will then move to the argon flow meter and then the bubbler. If the gas successfully passes the two equipment, it will proceed to the manifold. Adjust regulator 1 until the reading of the argon flow meter is between 3 and 4. Bubbles should be present in the bubbler when turning regulator 2. This will indicate that the gas is flowing. Obtain a second bubbler and bring it to the manifold hood. This bubbler is used to make sure the argon gas is traveling to the round bottom flask. Place the magnetic stir bar into the round bottom flask and position the septum over the opening. Secure the round bottom flask onto a ring stand by first aligning the neck of the flask with the clamp. Make sure to hold on to the clamp with your hands while tightening the screw clockwise. Obtain a needle from the instructor for both the argon outlet and argon inlet tubing. Insert both needles into the septum. The outlet is connected to the second bubbler while the inlet is connected to the manifold. Turn the knob in the manifold vertically to let the argon gas in. Bubbling should occur in the second bubbler immediately afterward. This would indicate that the argon gas is flowing through the round bottom flask. If bubbling does not occur, report to your instructor. The outlet needle may be clogged, or there may be a leak in the manifold tubing. In order to unclog the outlet needle, place a smaller needle inside and move it back and forth. In the full setup, the argon gas will be flowing first to the argon flow meter, then the first bubbler, then the manifold, the inlet tubing, the round bottom flask, the outlet tubing, 
and finally the second bubbler. If the argon gas is successfully traveling throughout the full setup, you are ready to flame dry. When flame drying, make sure the flame color is yellow. Heat the round bottom flask evenly until all of the vapor subsides. Be sure to move your hands constantly in order to avoid burning the magnetic stir bar. And keep the flame away from the rubber septum and clamp, especially if the clamp has a rubber coating. Therefore, it is suggested to use a metal clamp to avoid burning any rubber. Once all of the moisture has been removed, you are ready to add the reagents. The first step will be a two-person job. One person will weigh 2.8 millimoles of magnesium bromide diethyl etherate and place it into the round bottom flask while their partner holds on to the glassware. Be sure to place the septum back on quickly to minimize moisture contamination. Next, transfer 7.5 milliliters of dry methylene chloride to your round bottom flask. While stirring the mixture, add the following reagents to your round bottom flask using the designated syringe. 1.5 millimoles of S-phenyl thioacetate, 1.8 millimoles of the assigned aldehyde, 3 millimoles of the NN diazopropyl ethylamine. Stir the mixture for 30 minutes. The color of the mixture is expected to change from sandy brown to oily orange.